Hello and welcome back to the channel once again. Thank you guys for checking this out. Of course, if you could do me the favor, why don't you click down below and hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell button before we start. With that said, let's talk all about The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead is an interesting book for me. It's a book of highs and lows, and it's also another book, kind of like Spider-Man 2099, that I have near and dear to my heart. What do I mean by that? The Walking Dead is the book that I credit in bringing me back into reading comics. Like most of us out there, we go to high school, we move on with our lives, and we tend to drop comics. It wasn't until a few years after high school when I was already in college that a buddy of mine picks me up, we go over to a comic shop, and he hands me the first volume of Walking Dead, and he says I should read it. My first reaction was, why is it in black and white? Now, I know a lot of you out there have had probably the same reaction that I did when you first pick up the volume of Walking Dead because you're used to Western comics having a lot of color and a lot of pop. My friend then proceeds to smack me across the head Head and he says, shut up, read the first volume, and you'll like it. I took his advice. I mean, it was only 10 bucks, picked up the first volume. Little did I know <laughs> that I would proceed to show up to the comic book store the next day and pick up the other nine or so volumes that were already out. And that's really what's special and interesting of The Walking Dead. I liken the book to comic book crack. And what I mean by that is that you can give somebody the first volume and they will be instantly hooked. They want to read the next volume and the volume after that and they want to continue the story. There are certain books that are out there that I really hold to that prestige. I think books such as Why the Last Man, uh, Transmetropolitan, Fear Agent, Fables, the list goes on and on. But those books are the books that I think are just the creme de la creme. They're a little bit special and they... They're the books that you hand them to somebody and immediately they go, okay, I need to see where this story goes. For those of you that have been living under a rock and don't know what The Walking Dead is, it centers around the character of Rick Grimes. Rick Grimes, small town cop, ends up getting shot. He then is in a coma, wakes up, and the zombie apocalypse happened. If the beginning of the story sounds familiar, it's because it kind of sounds like the beginning of 28 Days Later. Kirkman has since said that, no, I've never seen 28 Days Later, and I didn't steal the idea from it. Neither here nor there, I'm not judging the guy, but I'm just saying, kind of similar. As a story, I think The Walking Dead is, it's interesting. It's a story that has a lot of highs and a lot of lows for me. And what I mean by that is that when the story hits his highs, it's unlike anything else out there. The first 48 issues of The Walking Dead, I will dare say, are some of the best comics that have been written in probably the last 20 to 30 years. I, I, I'm pretty confident in that. It's after the first 48 issues that I think The Walking Dead becomes a bit of a mixed bag. And I think that's because Kirkman tends to write the same story over and over again. What do I mean by that? I mean that as a writer, Kirkman has the same beats he tends to hit in every single arc. So you've got a set of characters, they end up getting to a new place, shit goes bad for them in one way, shape or form, and they have to leave and find another place. And that's really what The Walking Dead is. The story tends to repeat itself over and over again until you reach 193 issues and the series is done. I've touched on The Walking Dead before, but I think now looking back on it since the series is complete, we can kind of give a more thorough and interesting look at it. Like I previously mentioned, I think the first 48 issues are brilliant. It's after the first 48 issues that you start getting into arcs that slow things down. There are things involving hunters that was okay. The arc involving Negan is a breath of fresh air because they introduced the character of Negan and he was a big bad and I still remember the hype behind his reveal and the internet lost its monkey mind when issue 100 dropped and Negan ends up killing a beloved character. What that character is, I'm not saying on this video for the two or three of you that don't know at this point. As the series goes on, you get introduced to different concepts like Alpha and the larger horde of zombies, which are really fun and really interesting. I think one of the strongest things that Kirkman has going for him in the series is that he tends to write characters that don't have a lot of depth, I think is the correct term. And normally that would be a detriment, but when I say that, I mean that his characters are easy to get into. You understand 
this character is this, this character is this, this is why this character is doing. And he doesn't really tend to add too much to that. He also tends to have this really weird writing style where it's clear he has an idea, he wants to get to the bigger story beats, and he's really not interested in too many small moments. For example, you'll have one character that is talking to another character and he's completely normal, he's relaxed, and then all of a sudden that character that was talking to the other character ends up snapping because Kirkman seems to want to get to the bigger moments a lot faster. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this, it just tends to give the vibe that some of these characters are a bit bipolar? Now, Charlie Adler handles the majority of art on this series, and I have to say, I love Charlie Adler's art. I think the man is an amazing artist, absolutely absolutely incredible artist he's able to capture some very <laughs> horrifying and gruesome stuff uh, see issue 100 if you want an example of that uh, but if you pick up the series you're gonna notice that charlie adler does not do the art at the beginning of the series that is actually tony moore tony moore as an artist is one of my favorites i think he is an incredible comic book artist uh, the issue with tony moore being that he can't keep a monthly schedule so that's why you only see him on projects very sporadically he's kind of like a james stoko where his art style is very unique and instantly when you see a james stoko or you see a tony moore piece you know oh man, this is really wild stuff. Part of me wants to live in that other universe where Tony Moore did do 193 issues of Walking Dead, but personally, I think after 193 issues of Walking Dead, Tony Moore would not be on this earth anymore. The man would be spent. Overall, I think The Walking Dead is a fun book. There are multiple ways to collect this book. I have this little hardcover collection here. Uh, like I mentioned, there are 193 issues of this. This little collected edition contains only the first 12 issues. So bear in mind with that. If you do plan to start the series, it is a heavy, heavy financial investment. There are the compendiums out there. I don't recommend you pick up the compendiums, to be honest with you, unless you are somebody that just wants to read the first 48 issues of The Walking Dead and then you just throw that book on a table and you really don't care about presentation or binding or the book holding up over a long time. Because the compendiums have 48 issues inside of them, they tend to fall apart easily and they're not very well kept. There are also the omnibus editions. The omnibus editions are oversized. They are beautiful little collections that I recommend the diehard Walking Dead fans to pick up. Just know that they are pretty pricey. But overall, I feel like the small little collection that I just showed you guys for 20 bucks, you get 12 issues, you get a little bit of back matter in the back. It's it's pretty good deal. In closing, I think The Walking Dead is a series that now that it's completed, will have a special place in the history of comics. Uh, you can't deny the impact that it had on the industry, the fandom, the phenomenon that the TV show became. And if you have even a passing interest in the series, I think picking up one of these editions or picking up the trade paperbacks is a perfect way to start. I love the series. I, like I mentioned, have a special place in my heart for it. And I think you'll enjoy it too. I'm feeling like if I had to number the series and give it a rating, I'm gonna give it about a 9.5. I, I really, really do love the series. I just, I just wish Kirkman either cut it off sooner or just got a bit more creative with it and found different arcs or different ways that he could incorporate things. Of course, I'm not saying make zombie animals or anything crazy like that, but I just wish that there was a bit more creativity and Towards the end of the series, I kind of felt like this is starting to get stale and samey. Guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you like all of my content, please stick around, subscribe, bell button, and of course, hit the thumbs up. I love you guys. And of course, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.